The Boy Who Lost His Face by Louis Sacker, 30. I closed my eyes, said Tori Williams. She was standing at his front door. It was 10.30 Saturday morning. He had been playing solitaire as he anxiously waited for 12 o'clock when he heard the doorbell ring. He went to the door and there she was. You asked me for my phone number, she said. I closed my eyes and tried to remember it. I can remember things better when my eyes are closed. When I opened my eyes, you were gone. He stared at her for a second, or maybe it was a minute. Aren't you going to invite me in, Mr. Ballinger, she asked. It's not polite to leave a lady standing out in the cold. Please come in, Mrs. Will Miss Williams. Would you care for a cup of tea? Thank you, he led her into the kitchen. Do you have any herb tea, she asked. I don't know. I don't think so. I'll check. He found a brown bag of tea way in the back of the cabinet behind the coffee, decaffeinated coffee, regular tea, coffee filters, paper plates, and birthday candles. Chamomile tea? He asked, pronouncing it like it was spelled. So, chamomile. He'd never heard it before. Chamomile, said Tori. It's good. It wasn't in tea bags, and David didn't know how to brew loose tea, so Tori made it. She used a Japanese teapot that David and Ricky had once given their mother for mo on Mother's Day. As far as David could remember, it had never been used before. They sat next to each other at the kitchen counter and sipped their tea. David added some honey to his. It didn't taste too bad, kind of like sweet grass. Her eyes flashed at him over her raised teacup. He looked at the clock on the stove. It was, 10 it was 10 to 11. He set down his cup. You're going to think this is really weird, he said. What? I don't know how to begin, he smiled. Four score and seven years ago, Tori laughed. You know that lady? Mrs. Um, Bayfield? Tori swallowed tea. Yes, she's, she's a witch, said David. Her eyes widened. She is? I'm not kidding. She put a curse on me. That's why those things have been happening to me, like what happened yesterday when I asked you for your phone number. I closed my eyes, said Tori. Well, I just want you to know it wasn't my fault. I guess in a way it was my fault, but not in the way you'd think. It all started about three weeks ago. I used to hang out with Scott, Roger, and Randy. He noticed Tori's face redden slightly when he mentioned Randy's name. Have you seen Mrs. Bayfield's snakehead cane, he asked. Uh, I think so, said Tori. It was stolen, wasn't it? She took another sip of tea. He wondered how she knew that. He wondered what she was doing here. It suddenly occurred to him that Randy might have sent her over as part of some joke, or maybe as a spy. I helped steal it, he said. She raised her eyebrows. He told Tori what happened, how they knocked Miss Bayfield over and stole her cane, but the whole time he had been feeling that Tori already knew all about it. At the time, I thought it was a mean thing to do to a poor old lady, he said. You know, what if it was her only cane and she couldn't walk without it? Little did I know. He shook his head. I really didn't do anything bad to her except for giving her the finger, which really isn't so bad when you think about it. Mostly, I just sort of stood around, he shrugged. But I guess followers are just as much to blame as leaders. What did Randy do, asked Tori. Randy? He was the one who pulled her rocking chair over. So then what happened, asked Tori. She put a curse on me. I know it sounds crazy, but everything that happened to her started happening to me. He told her about throwing the baseball through the window and about the apple juice pouring on Elizabeth's face. Remember when I fell over in my chair in social studies? Yes, whispered Tori. Twice, she put her hand over her mouth. Was that the curse? David nodded. Just like she had been knocked over in a rocking chair, and I guess you probably heard about the beaker I broke in science. She nodded. Her mouth was hidden behind her cup, but he could see she was smiling. It wasn't my fault, he explained. It was the curse. Roger broke her pitcher of lemonade, so she broke my pitcher. She must be a witch, Tori said conclusively. He couldn't tell if she really believed it or if she was just playing along. She really is, he said. He, she steals people's faces. She has them hanging all over the walls of her house. Somehow she manages to keep them preserved. The lemonade, exclaimed Tori, huh? It probably wasn't really lemonade. It was face juice. Uh, maybe, said David. Lucky you didn't drink any, said Tori. He nodded. He told her about seeing Mrs. Bayfield's underwear. And then, well, you know what happened yesterday when I talked to you? I closed my eyes, she reminded him. He smiled. Well, even if you didn't see what happened, she saw. She sees and hears everything I do. She does? How do you know? Well, I don't know if you remember, but um, yesterday you said I looked like a Greek poet. Tori blushed. And after I left you, I ran to her to try to beg her to remove the curse. The first thing she said to me was, you look like a Greek poet. It was her way of telling me that she'd been watching me the whole time. Again, David thought he saw Tori smile behind her cup. Why did he have the feeling that she knew something he didn't? 
I wonder if she's watching us right now, Tori whispered. She looked around suspiciously. Probably there's nothing we can do about it. He glanced at the clock. So anyway, I have to get the cane and bring it back to her so she'll remove the curse. Did she tell you that? He nodded. She said she'd remove the curse if you returned the cane for the first time. Tori seemed genuinely surprised. Yes, he said. Then he took a sip of tea. Hmm, said Tori. Ricky was coming down the hall. David watched him out of the corner of his eye. The last thing he needed was for Ricky to make some crack about his brother the stooge or his stoogey girlfriend. Ricky stopped and stared at Tori. He walked into the kitchen. Hi, she greeted him. Hi, said Ricky, still staring. David introduced them. Tori, this is my brother. Ricky, Ricky, Tori, would you like some chamomile tea? Tori offered. David closed his eyes. He could just imagine what his brother was thinking. Okay, said Ricky. Get a cup, said Tori. Ricky got a teacup and sat down at the counter on the other side of Tori. He reached for the teapot, but Tori picked it up first. It's bad luck to pour your own tea, she said as she poured it for him. He took a sip and made a face. Do you want some honey in it? She asked. Did you put honey in your tea? asked Ricky. No, I like it plain. I don't want honey, he said. He took another sip of the tea. It's good, he smiled at Tori. David watched amazed. Ricky obviously didn't think Tori was a stooge. He glanced at the clock on the stove. It was 25 past 11. Like this, said Tori. She held her teacup in her first two fingers. Her pinky was sticking straight out. Ricky daintily picked up his teacup. They both laughed. The doorbell rang. David and Ricky looked at each other. Somebody get that, shouted their father. I'll get it, Ricky said reluctantly. He took another sip of chamomile tea. Then he stood up and headed for the door. David and Tori smiled at each other like they were sharing some secret joke. Except David didn't know what the joke was. Ricky returned, followed by Larry, Moe, and a little brown and gray dog that Moe had on a leash. It wasn't much bigger than a puppy with one ear up and the other down. Oh, how cute, exclaimed Tori. Larry and Moe stared at her for a second, then looked quizzically at David. He shrugged. Larry pointed at the dog with his thumb, smiled, and said, Kill her. I got him at the pound, said Moe, kneeling down to pet her dog. I wanted to get a big, mean dog, but she rubbed Killer's head. If nobody took him, they would have executed him. Killer licked her face. Would you like some chamomile tea? Tori offered. Barf, said Moe. Tori laughed. No, it's really good, said Ricky. So, um, said Larry, we'll go with you to fight Roger if you still want. I mean, if you're going to get beat up. I might as well get beat up, too, he smiled and adjusted his blue sunglasses. What are best friends for? David smiled. Thanks, buddy, he said. Thanks, Mo. I'm not just doing it for you, said Mo. I'm doing it for me, too. I'm sick of those, she looked at Ricky. Aardvarks. You're going to fight Roger Delbrook, asked Tori. If I have to, said David. He has the cane. I'm going to, she declared. Me, too, said Ricky. David glanced at his brother. I don't. Glenn will be there, said Ricky. I want another shot at Glenn Delbrook. And that is the end of chapter 30.